Listen, everybody needs a fairy godmother, you know? Just somebody to look out for them. Some people call me their fairy smoke mother, others their internet big sister, but you can call me Hannah, the host of Smoke Sash. So come hang out. Let's light up and talk everything there is to life. The good, the bad, the ugly, the embarrassing. I've got a story for it all. Hello, hotties of the world, and welcome back to another beautiful, wonderful episode of Smoke Sesh. My name is Hannah, your sesh host, and I am honestly so excited to be back with you guys today. I have had a whirlwind of a week. I can't believe it's only been, well, obviously seven days since I've sat down with you, but I've been so busy that it feels like it's been months. Honestly, I feel like I've been gone for months. Um, (laughs) It was a pretty chaotic, hectic, so fun week. Um, But this time last week, I was sitting down to pre-record with you guys because I was getting on a plane on Tuesday to fly to Austin, Texas. So I was panic packing, laundrying it up. I got my nails done. Ooh, look at these nails, you guys. Honestly, this is the shortest I've ever gone and I'm loving this length. I'm loving all of the sparkles and the gemstones. I have gotten so many compliments this week. Thank you, girlies, for all the compliments. You're so sweet. Um, But I literally recorded this panic-packed laundry, went and got my nails done at 5 p.m., got home at like 8, had dinner, immediately passed out, was on the plane at 6.30. Like hello girls we are on the move we are grooving and when life kind of sweeps me up like that it's like it's really nice because you kind of get to forget about all the shit you have going on at home which really honestly for me is nothing it's not like i'm running away from anything thank god thank you universe for putting me in a good position um but it was such a great escape as you guys know i was leaving to head to austin texas to visit one of my amazing amazing good college friends um who actually lived here for a little bit a couple months uh travel nursing and found her way down to austin texas and loved it so much that she stayed So, you know, I had to go check out the city and see what was up. Let's be real. Texas was not a place that I thought I would ever, ever find myself in. It's not necessarily a place that I was like, "Mm, yeah, I'll go there for a vacation. That's number one on my list. Like Texas and Florida are kind of up there where it's just like, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like there's other (laughs) which is now that I say it's kind of mean, I guess, but there's just other places I would rather go. I do think the Republican influence definitely makes it a little scarier to travel there where I'm like, oh, are people going to be as friendly as I as they should be when you travel somewhere just because of the laws and the politics going on down there? But listen, hey, I wasn't going to let that hold me back. I had to go see my friend and I was pleasantly surprised by austin texas to be fair it was giving denver do you know what i mean and i think everybody who was living there kind of knew that about austin texas is it was like definitely i feel like well honestly i don't live in texas so don't quote me on this but it felt like the most progressive area in the probably entire state of texas like it wasn't a houston it wasn't a nashville it was like a little bit more weird, which I appreciated, a little less Trump signs. And I'm from Missouri, so I understand, you know, the politics of it all. Like, I get it. But Austin was pleasantly surprising. Oh my God, I had genuinely so much fun. We were booked and busy since I landed. I got on that plane at 6.30, I landed at like, what, 10? Immediately, she swooped me in the car, blunt rolled. (laughs) Don't even worry, babe. Blunt rolled, smoked on the way to go get brunch. We ended up at this place called Sourdough, which was, or no, no, not Sourdough, Sour Duck, which was fantastic. It was an outdoor gardeny area that you know you go get a little mimosa get a little drink get a little breakfast burrito actually massive breakfast burrito the size of my head that was fantastic um and we ordered a little cocktail and (laughs) 
the guy bringing it out to us was like wow this is the first cocktail i've made all morning like okay sorry about that sir it's vacation time it is a tuesday i was there tuesday to friday so i didn't really get to see the city in full swing but it was a pretty incredibly busy city so thank god i wasn't there on a weekend because i could see how that would be overwhelming the traffic lines were already long enough like i did not need to sit in that for hours and hours and hours but we went to sour duck we got a fat breakfast burrito i'm like oh my gosh let me check my photos because we did so much i'm like wait then what did we do the first day was kind of a blur i was a little sleep deprived uh morning flights are really not my vibe if anything i would rather fly out on a night immediately go get some dinner head to a hotel and sleep off the flight but the the flight was cheaper let's be real the flight was a little cheaper had to go there early wanted to get more time in with my bestie but we got some fantastic food in and then we headed to go shopping i wanted to get some shopping done i wanted to visit some vintage stores things like that um so i went out credit card in hand swiping left and right um in kansas city there's not a lot of storefronts there's not a lot of storefronts um there's like the big name brands like gucci i don't know bullshit like that i'm not going in there but there were a bunch of stores that like i shop online And there's also a bunch of very fantastic vintage stores. So we spent the morning post blunt, post morning cocktail breakfast burrito shopping our little hearts out, which was so nice. I needed some girls time just going out and looking at things and spending money. We ended up at David Yerman and she almost bought this $4,000 bracelet. I was like, girl, let's think about it a little bit. Let's go have another glass of wine. Let's think about it. Um, And then we ended up at this really cute little old house That was also like a coffee shop slash bar. I'm forgetting the name. Apologies. And we ended up playing chess and drinking these amazing, I think they were Greek coffees. They were called Freddos. I don't know. I don't know. Don't don't quote me on that. Fantastic. They also had happy hour all day. $2.50 glasses of wine. Hello? Get me three. Thank you. Thank you. So I learned how to play chess. She taught me how to play chess and when I was there, I was expecting it to be like 100 degrees outside. Texas, hello. I thought it was going to be dry and hot, but it was beautiful. Beautiful. I think I came at the perfect week because there were some storms passing through. Um, so it was a little cloudy, a little less humid as well. And everything was cooling off a bit, which was just gorgeous and made it just a beautiful time the entire time. Uh, so we sat on the patio. We had some drinks mid-afternoon did our little thing, headed home, changed, showered, kind of relaxed for a second. And then we went out to dinner. She had never had dumplings before. Hello, crazy. I got to feed you some dumplings. We ended up at Dumpling House. Honestly, for a chain dumpling place, fantastic. Great. Amazing. We filled up had our little dumpling moment she loved them got some zai long bao which are honestly probably my favorite food on this planet the soup dumplings Oof, i can eat those at any point in time they are so heartwarming i love a zai long bao got some dumplings filled up and then she was like the whole day she's like i think i need a new bong i think i need a new bong because she had this tiny little one that was about meh, this big and every time i hang out with her she always has like some sort of massive piece like two foot long piece this is the first time in my life that i've like hung out with her and she's like yeah here's my tiny little bong so the entire day she's like well i'm with you we should buy a piece somewhere so after dinner we're just driving down i don't know what street driving down the city doing whatever and i look across my shoulder and there's a smoke shop called mr smoke so i was like oh that's funny mr smoke she goes oh you know mr smoke whips through four lanes of traffic pulls the fuck over pulls into this parking lot of mr smoke i'm like have you been here before do you like love this place or something she's like no i've never been babe (laughs) she brought up mr smoke like she knew him personally i'm like what is going on we hop out of the car we're the only people in this parking lot it's like what 10 p.m like let's head into this strange smoke shop on the side of the road whatever we walk in (gasps) it's like the holy lights started shining on us there was like these beautiful string lights there was incense burning there was amy winehouse playing we look at the glass pieces 20 percent off all glass 
Oh, thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Somebody was looking out for us. We walk in there. There's this cutie little girl working the, the stand or whatever. We're looking at pieces. We end up finding this massive, I'm talking like from my chair to here, like two foot long bong for like 60 bucks. I showed my boyfriend a picture. He goes, oh, like what was that? 180? No, no, no. If there's one thing the girls are going to find, it's a deal. Okay. Uh, so we <laughs> immediately purchased this bong. The sweet girly bubble wrapped the shit out of this. We put it in our purse. We said, let's go. Of course, made a late night ice cream stop at the Bake to Bear, which was fantastic. It's like a build your own ice cream sandwich place. Listen, the munchies were off the charts. I was expecting this to be a very expensive trip. I was like, Austin, Texas, pretty popular, pretty busy, lots of people, expensive, expensive. You go to any major city you, with a lot of people, you expect people to kind of be raising prices. Also, I live in Kansas City, and since there has been a pretty large influx of people, I have found that restaurants have really been raising their their prices. Like, inflation is occurring everywhere, let's be real. But I was expecting, you know, okay, I'm going to drop like, a grand or so on this trip everything was so much cheaper in austin than i ever could have imagined maybe it's because there's so many people there so all the places had to get a little bit more competitive about the prices everything was so cheap i don't know what was going on maybe it was just our lucky day maybe it was weekday prices but i was so pleasantly surprised by that then we made it home. I laid down on the couch. She fed me like three Tylenol PM and put a weighted blanket on me. Knocked out. Knocked out. Fantastic first day. Dumplings, cocktails, breakfast burrito, new bong, shopping, chess playing. Chess is surprisingly fun. I think I'm going to get a piece for like a chess board for my living room because it's fun to teach people and it's kind of fun to play. I've really been into things like stimulating my brain recently. Okay, growing up. Okay, adult activities. The next morning, we woke up early. We wanted to go on a hike and Austin, Texas has this pretty large river flowing through it. Another thing I was surprised by was the nature. I was thinking like desert, not gonna lie. Not like desert, like red sand desert, but at least like dry as fuck, like a couple of trees, maybe a river here and there. This place had more trees and more nature than the middle of where I am, the middle of the map, Missouri. Like I'm in the middle of nowhere, honestly, if you really think about it. And this place, even though it was like a metropolis, a big city, they really honestly built around the nature aspect of it all. And I think are trying relatively to preserve it, which is really nice. We went on this beautiful, like probably three, four mile long hike along the river overlooking like the city line and the amount of people out on a Tuesday, like walking, running with their dogs. There was a dog that... In their owner and matching cowboy hats going on a run i was like this place is so silly this is killing me um but it was just so incredibly gorgeous i was like i could see myself walking down this river walk every single day she's also like oh this is where all the bodies are <laughs> i was like oh girl okay i'll keep my eyes at my feet so we did this big gorgeous hike and then we ended up at the holy grail of all holy grails juice land juice land changed my life listen i love a fresh pressed juice you go get a fresh pressed juice in kansas city 15 dollars for a small you go to juice land that has eight different kinds of juices and yerba mate and cbd and ashwagandha and anything you could possibly imagine in this juice and it's a large it's like six dollars hello hello get me five of them okay we ended up at juice land um the original one i don't know what street it was on but it was quite gorgeous in this old like stone house they're playing like edm and they have like a disco ball going it's like 10 a.m like okay love it ended up doing a little bit more vintage shopping and then she gets a call from her friend she is so silly she kills me she will make a friend wherever she goes she will bring up a conversation a conversation and chit chat with anybody okay anybody anybody she finds on the street she'll be like oh love you girl like you're so sweet hey like what are you doing you know and i love that about her because i am although i'm like an extrovert when i feel safe and comfortable if i'm in a new situation i am very much so introverted like not interested in conversating at all a little awkward a little shy for sure i know it comes up as the opposite on this podcast but also i'm like sitting in my house on my couch hello 
So she's like, oh, my friend's calling me. She's like, I met this dude who's like 37 in a Uber pool one night on the way to a Sean Paul concert. I'm like, girl, what? What are you talking about? She's like, yeah, he's super fun. He's like a DJ and does the lights at a late night club. He's like, hey, come pick me up. Let's go get lunch. So she's like, sure, fuck it. Like this dude is probably like one of my best friends here. I want you to meet my other best friend. Like, let's hang out. So we swoop him up. He's killing me. He's silly, silly. No cares in the world. 37 DJ, like chilling. You know what I mean? So we swoop him. He's like, oh, I need to grab my stuff and drop it off at the club. All of a sudden, we're in the middle of this club. There's an after hours club starts at 2 a.m., in at 2 p.m in the afternoon they're like restocking everything i'm like let me get behind the dj booth and take some photos so silly killing me um and he's like okay we gotta go get barbecue i'm in texas i gotta try barbecue to be fair nothing compares to kansas city barbecue i know i'm from here whatever anywhere i go nothing ever compares to kansas city barbecue when it comes to the meats the smoking the sauces the culture of it all kansas city is always on top but she's like okay terry blacks is like the place it's right next to my house terry blacks is the place that everybody goes it's always popping always busy this place was chaotic chaotic I loved that you could go in there and like pick all your sides like you could munch out best to believe we smoked a lot and went in there ready to go I got like banana pudding apple pie I got, like mac and cheese potato salad pickled jalapenos onions I got everything okay and they're like you tell me you tell us what you want tell us the size you want we'll throw it on your tray and then you get to pick your meats and it's like there's three different ones to choose from they're pulling it out of the smoker in front of you putting it onto a cutting board right next to the checkout counter and chopping it up and throwing it on bread right in front of you it was really good it was fantastic once again nothing really compares to kansas city barbecue but the sides were killer the sides were the star of the show at terry black's uh so we filled up our on barbecue a little too much a little too much the girlies working the counters were so sweet i was like oh that sausage looks so good she's like do you want a piece for free yes yes i do thank you queen so we filled up on barbecue we went home we took a little nap he's like okay he texted us he's like we should go to a comedy show tonight let's go to joe rogan's comedy show i'm like uh, joe rogan i don't know but comedy like i doubt he's gonna fucking be there let's go see what's up it's a tuesday wednesday i don't know what day it is it's a weekday night it's gonna be chill no matter what i haven't been to a comedy show in a long time like fuck it let's go see what's up so we had plans that night to go to a wine cave and it was this nine course wine cave wine tasting full dinner so we're like we're gonna go do that and then we're gonna get an uber and we're gonna go to the late night comedy sh club showing we get ready we get our little girly outfits on we end up at this wine cave we're running late by the way completely running late you know us girlies not even paying attention to the time we're like oh we have an hour to get ready she checks her phone we're supposed to be there we're supposed to be there call the uber now finish doing your winged eyeliner like let's go we're sprinting to the uber the uber drops us off we're like five minutes late to it's like an 8 p.m dinner whatever we're five minutes late not that late i mean a little late but not that late I didn't say get there early you know i know it's an experience but i'm not like 15 10 minutes late just five minutes we walk in giggling our asses off probably reeking of weed it is this like gorgeous restaurant and it's us <laughs> these two silly girlies and like five other long-term couples who are like holding flutes of champagne had already finished their first course we walk in we're like oh my god where are we what is going on we're definitely gonna ruin the vibe this year like not to break up date night y'all they greet us with like a flute of champagne and you can tell all these people are waiting on us it had been five minutes but they're all like done with their wine like looking around like what's going on like okay they're like all right everybody enter the wine cave now and we'll start our courses i had so much weird food so much weird food i mean i love a food experience and i love like getting out of my comfort zone but i was like 
the theme is not theming i don't know if there even is a theme here we had at least a bottle of wine each that was guaranteed like throughout the tastings like by the end of it after these nine tastings you're gonna have drank a full bottle of wine each which fantastic love but they were pairing like a white with like a deconstructed deviled egg which was like white egg mush and caviar i was like great thank you great thank you thank you for this one bite they were pairing another white with like a cucumber raw salmon roll they were pairing my favorite was this deep red wine with a black truffle ravioli a little piece of mint and a little slice of strawberry oh talk about fantastic it was great didn't really fill up but it was fantastic they told us about all the wines we were giggling having a good time and this to be fair paper mache fake cave but also like cute fun love the ambiance love the weirdness of it all but we were definitely breaking up date night it was a little silly that me and her were there and then it's like this couple celebrating their anniversary this couple just got engaged this couple's like on their fifth date i'm like <laughs> it was pretty funny but it was a great time had some fantastic wines don't know the name of the restaurant so sorry but i'm sure if you google wine cave you will find it i think it was like 130 dollars a person maybe less maybe 95 maybe 130 total but it was a, an experience like nothing I've ever had before. And I've been to plenty of wine tastings. My parents always at a winery, always somewhere in a winery drinking wine. That's what I grew up doing. Like on a Saturday night, I wasn't out playing with my neighbors. We were at a winery somewhere and I was running around like playing tag in the vineyards. Oh, so bougie of me. But it was just like, no, nah. that was just like their hobby. That was like what they wanted to do. So, of course, me, the child, had to tag along always. But that was great. Loved it. 10 out of 10. We looked super hot. We had some good food. We had some good wine. Great success. Call the Uber. Let's go. We called the Uber. We're smoking this blunt outside of this restaurant on our way to the mothership the mothership is joe rogan's comedy club we pull up it's like a 10 30 showing which i thought was the best they had like seven eight nine and then 10 30 i was like let's go to the 10 30 one like people are gonna be getting silly you know what i mean like at this point all of the comedians are like tired over it they're gonna be trying some shit that they've never tried before love that time let's do it we pull up they're like okay put this wristband on and then give me your phone i'm like what do you mean give me my give me my phone what do you mean pause what are you talking about they're like yeah no we have to <laughs> we have to lock your phone up i'm like listen there is nothing these people are saying in here that is funny enough that i'm gonna be recording for any sort of reason that you need to lock my phone up but also like i'm not that bitch who's like i can't go without my phone for an hour so like sure whatever lock it up they put in this like little bag or whatever and then you get to keep it on you i thought they were gonna keep it like somewhere else because i was like how are you gonna know which one's mine they're like no you keep it babe I'm like oh okay they take us upstairs to the comedy room whatever it's this tiny little club room um and it was a two drink minimum per person so best believe we're gonna get a little silly best believe we're gonna have a good time we sit down me her her friends like third row to the back we wanted to get there a little late because best believe i'm not sitting in the front row i am not gonna get roasted i don't have the mental space to get roasted it is suicide prevention month like let's not go there i don't need to get tore down in front of a bunch of people i will end it all in front of everybody <laughs> especially in austin texas like don't let these republicans roast me i'm gonna lose it the comedians were great the first couple ones were fantastic there were some people that like were coming out i i had no idea who any of these people were let's be real i'm not keeping up with the joe rogan universe i'm there for the vibes fully i'm there for the laughs and the giggles and the goofs and the gaffes but there were some people that were walking in there that these grown men in cowboy boots were like ah for i was like <laughs> who is this man that these men are screeching for like what is going on the first couple people i could tell were like the newbies or whatever they were young obviously and they were better than the people who these grown men were screeching for they were better than the people who were on like the quote-unquote i don't know what it's called the kill tony podcast or whatever where all the comedians are they were so much better because their comedy was simply just talking about like everyday things it was making fun of people in like a very generalized way that everybody could laugh the people at the end started telling well texas joe rogan's comedy club they started telling jokes like haha 
Biden, ha <laughs> ha, Kamala, ha <laughs> ha, COVID. It's like, bitch, shut up. No one wants to think about that. We're all here to forget about everything else going on in the outside world. That's why our phone is fucking locked up. No one wants to hear about that shit. It's old. It's overused. I'm not Trump with two fucking brain cells who's going to giggle at that. Like, even the men who are, like, uh, screaming for these men who were then telling, like, old-ass 2020 jokes, like, did not laugh. I was like, thank God. There were some people who were definitely getting roasted in the front row. Pretty silly. Pretty funny to laugh at other people. Love that for me. But... 10 out of 10 I thought it was a great experience I thought it was so worth the money and the two drink minimum and the $18 cocktails that were pretty mid but the comedians were great they did a great job that was probably one of my best experiences there that was probably a highlight of my night um and then since we were out with her DJ friend we were like well let's run around it was on 6th street like let's run around 6th street to all the clubs and the bars and go check it out fuck it no one else is out it's a pretty slow night this is like the only night that you're gonna be able to have like a fun experience without it being so fucking packed and there being a line and we were with him so he knows the bouncers he's like don't you dare hand an id out or pay a cover fee like fuck that just walk in like i know them don't you dare so we were bar hopping around jumping around checking things out see this dj going to see this dj going to this club my friend was like shots 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 then it got to the point in the night where i was like i'm tired i'm i'm not a 5 a.m girly anymore she is she's a night nurse so like she's used to being up late this is like her 12 p.m this is my 12 a.m very big differences you know so she's like let's keep going let's keep going i'm like i gotta you know when you have like a wild animal of a friend you're like all right let's move it this way let's go this way let me round her up and make sure she's safe and get her out of here it was kind of silly in that sort of way she was like you have to take a shot with me i'm like yeah sure definitely the bartender starts making me a shot i'm like oh no no it's okay just get her one we'll get her home safe make sure she has a good night we took some silly photos in a photo booth great night ended up at a euro truck got some feta fries killer euro ended up at home like 3 a.m devoured a euro showered laid down weighted blanket on i passed out she was up till 6 a.m she was cleaning the house i was like babe this is impressive honestly cleaning the house playing a youtube video she took the trash out she was doing laundry i was like i have never seen somebody so functional in my entire life like honestly genuinely so impressive then we woke up at 8 a.m again you know i was ready to be up to get out to do some fun things we hit this place called austin java and i had a latte that changed my life also sorry i'm going on and on and on about this trip but some people are like i love hearing about your experiences so fuck it like let's get into it this austin java had a latte called the dubai chocolate latte I know what you know what I'm talking about. The Dubai chocolate, the viral Dubai chocolate where they break it and then it's full like the pistachio ganache. I have never had the Dubai chocolate, but I did want the Dubai chocolate latte. And I got a large, of course, and it was cold brew with pistachio milk and mocha. Life-changing, life-changing, fantastic, so fucking good, amazing. Once again, like $4. That latte in Kansas City would have cost me at least 15 we wanted to go to this Blue Hole River. I think that's what it's called. Blue Hole Springs. Something like that. Essentially, it's this um, place outside. It's near San Marcos, Texas. It's like an hour-ish, 30, 45 minutes-ish outside of Austin, Texas. I wanted to get in nature. I wanted to do frolic. I wanted to be in the forest. Our goal that week was really to have like a calming, relaxing weekend. That night was like our let's get crazy, let's drink night. But the rest of the week, we just wanted to do our own thing and run around and really just relax it up. So there's this spring that I wanted to go swim in. But when we pulled up, since it was raining that week, they had it closed. I I could tell why. I mean, in the pictures, it was like blue, gorgeous water. And then when we got there, it was like a little murky, you know, a little rainy, a little cold. It was like, I get it. I get why it's closed. So 
we picked up this chicken sandwich by the way one of you guys dm me and was like i think i just saw you walk past my liquor store i did i was walking to the pizza place next door you should have came out and said hi but i'm saying hi now <laughs> but i was walking to the pizza place next door to get like a pesto chicken sandwich that we could split for lunch we ended up just picnicking at the blue hole spring whatever under the cypress trees next to the buzzing bumblebees and the squirrels and it was gorgeous i could understand why so many people go there and picnic and hang out in the summers i bet it is fantastic and amazing but once again we were there to swim we wanted to go swimming so we ended up at the san marcus river there was a bunch of people out picnicking enjoying their day the water was a little bit warmer it was way clearer i mean it was moving you know it was like moving and grooving so of course it's going to be clean and clear so we ended up hiking a little bit further down and found this amazing i was surprised by how gorgeous the water was like it was as blue as of course like we're not like i haven't seen water like this since mexico of course we're close to there so obviously but the water was so clear it was gorgeous teal greens i was high as fuck staring at this water like wow this is like serene serenity incredible i would be here every day if i could you ain't gonna find that out here in missouri okay I grew up in the Ozarks. The The clarity of the water was one inch. It was brown water. But that's what I was used to. So this was like gorgeous in my eyes. You know what I mean? Um, but we ended up at the St. Marcus River. We didn't go tubing or anything. Tubing would have been so fun. There were so many kids with tubes like going down the waterfalls doing their thing um but we ended up hiking down a little bit and found this very secluded deep spot that we just laid out in and enjoyed the sun and swam around and oh my gosh it was just gorgeous it was incredible once again i was very pleasantly surprised by all of the nature in austin texas and just in texas in general it was it was shocking to me i was not expecting any of this and i did research okay i was looking places up i was like okay you know what to expect what's going on and although the pictures are perfect i never ever trust a picture because i know there could be editing i know there could be like a little more saturation than usual whatever it is like if you're trying to advertise something of course it's going to be the best picture possible but when i tell you the pictures were worse than what it is in real life and the pictures were gorgeous this water was like incredible i'm gonna post some pictures of my experience in austin texas i guess today that i post it i'm recording on monday but i'm posting on tuesday like the waterfalls that we swam in and the rivers and when you see these you're gonna be like wow that is incredible anyways we ended up back home we showered we changed and then we ended up at this gorgeous i we were on i think we were on rainy street i guess is what it's called um there's a bunch of just like really cute little spots and houses that you can go hang out at and get some dinner and we ended up at this place called lichas which is very similar to my restaurant but if it was mexican food and we had the best dinner i have had in a while we had guacamole fresh salsa fresh chips we got chicken mole we got steak tacos we got two drinks each once again so cheap under a hundred dollars was not expecting this we sat out on the patio it was so nice we were able to enjoy the weather enjoy the moment we got there at the perfect time because as soon as we sat down like there was a line out the door immediately of course probably because we were sitting outside and we were just so cute that everybody wanted to come eat at the restaurant <laughs> i'm kidding but it was amazing 10 out of 10 recommend if you're in austin texas food was incredible service was incredible loved it all around and then since we were running around all day and we had one last day we went home early did a face mask smoked out of the two foot long bong and then she corrupted my brain she corrupted me in a way that i will never forgive her for for she made me down low dress to impress <laughs> I have never been more addicted to a video game in my entire life. I, we sat there and played Dress to Impress for at least four hours. At the minimum, at the minimum. You will sit down and play this game and all of a sudden it's like eight hours later and you're like, what happened? I've only been on my phone for five minutes. It is so fun. It is so fun. Genuinely, I'm going to finish recording this podcast and I'm going to play about an hour of it it is my favorite thing to do now and she has corrupted me but we had a great time that night just ripping the bong and doing a face mask and playing that like what are girls supposed to do you know what i mean we wake up the next morning of course another 
do buy chocolate latte. And then this is also... So my favorite nightlife experience was the mothership. My favorite, favorite, favorite like nature experience that we did was this place called Kraus Springs. It's about an hour outside of Austin, Texas. I love that like I was taking her to places that she had never heard of. She's like, what the fuck is this place? Why are, you, why are we driving this far? But like, fuck it, let's do it. You know, she's down for anything. You say you want to do something. She's like, in the car, let's go. That's why I love her. She's like a down ass bitch. Um, so this place called Kraus Springs, which is actually a campsite but they have these spring-fed waterfalls and a butterfly garden. And we were driving in down this dirt road. We saw a sign. It was like cattle crossing. I was like, cattle? What are you talking about? There's cows everywhere as you drive in. Beautiful, beautiful, blondy brown cows doing their thing. We're like calling out to them. Private land, private property. You pull up it is like the garden of eden in there there are these massive cypress trees with these wind chimes hanging down from them it was a little cloudy a little windy so like the sound of these chimes hold on let me pull it up i was like this is my heaven i have been to many a beautiful places but this honestly tops it like what are you kidding me she's deathly afraid of butterflies <laughs> so we were walking on this butterfly garden and i could tell she was like on edge but it was just you walk in you get your little wristband you're in this lush garden oasis with these like running little fountains and waterfalls these beautiful cactuses large trellises of fresh flowers and beautiful trees there's hammocks out there's chairs you can sit and read in and then you hike down and there is a private pool like this beautiful deep blue pool that is fresh spring fed so we swam in that a little and then when you walk down the steps there are these beautiful waterfalls fresh moss covered waterfalls with this area for swimming with this rock area for laying out i was like we're gonna be here for a while so we dove in we swam we frolicked under the waterfalls we took some cute pictures we laid in the garden we had some good food it was just the most magical experience of my life i was like i don't think heaven exists but if it does exist it is this place right here right now and let me tell you this Girls will be in the most magical place on earth and they will still be on dress to impress. Best believe we frolicked a little, our little hearts out. We played around in the waterfalls. We swam, tired ourselves out, walked back up to the garden. We laid on a hammock for about two hours under the wind chimes, under the large cypress trees, playing dress to impress, of course, <laughs> until our phones died. Absolutely. What are girls supposed to do? You know, relaxing evening. Best believe I will be playing dress to impress. <laughs> she has corrupted me. So funny. This kills me. This was a little silly. So there's this place called the Oasis, which is on a Lake Travis, which was on the way home. And apparently it is supposed to be the largest restaurant in the United States. It's right on the edge of the water. It's supposed to be magical, beautiful. She was like, oh, yeah, I visited my friend up in Wisconsin and even her like her grandma. I brought up Austin, Texas. And the first thing she mentioned was the Oasis. I'm like, OK, you're hyping this place up like let's go check it out let's go see major major l do not go there that was the only place that i was like okay this is my first like pretty cheesy experience in austin te texas like we sat down we looked around we all we wanted was like a cocktail we looked at the menu they were 18 dollars cocktails excuse me also the entire river or the lake that it was on was like dried up so it wasn't even that beautiful and we like sat down we got our waters i have never done this at a restaurant before but she looked at me and she's like i think we have to go i think we have to go which listen 
I'm a server. I would rather someone come in, sit down, realize it's not the right place and leave before like wasting my time and them having a bad experience. So I was like, oh my God. So we got up, we grabbed like the little to-go cups and we like sprinted out of there really quickly. Ended up at this place called P. Terry's, which listen, I'm an in and out girl through and through. I was like, I need in and out if it's here. She's like, no, you have to have P. Terry's. P. Terry's is like the burger place in all of Austin. So of course we got like a triple cheeseburger, extra onions, extra jalapeno, caramel, coffee, milkshake, like let's go home. Devoured that, packed up. All of a sudden, I'm back on the plane and I am back home. Had a busy weekend, worked my little butt off. I worked all weekend. Um, my boyfriend took me to the sunflower fields the other day, which was so gorgeous and incredible. And a Kansas staple, like you just have to go every September when they're blooming, you have to go see the sunflower fields. It's like miles and miles of eight foot tall, big ass yellow sunflowers, like gorgeous. So he's so sweet. I got off the plane. I got to brunch. I worked my shift. He took me to the fields. We took some pictures. We frolicked in the fields, went home, fell asleep, worked another brunch shift, went to family dinner. I literally like blinked that trip was over. I am back here, back with you guys. And wow, was it an experience. Austin, Texas, you treated me so well. The people were so nice. They had that Midwestern friendliness. Maybe it's that Southern hospitality um, that was just so kind and so welcoming. Everybody was so fun. We were in David Yerman. They're like, oh, what do you plan on doing in your trip here? She's like, smoke weed and hang out. And they were like, yes bitch like that's what you're supposed to do like we're in this high-end jewelry store and they're like love that for you girls like thank god you're gonna do that so we frolicked our little hearts out we had some great wine some fantastic food and it was just 10 out of 10 trip i understand why so many people are moving there i get it i get that that's annoying for everybody living there like i understand i probably won't move there because like i still want to have rights <laughs> I cannot live in Texas in general the same way I like couldn't live in Florida but visiting was a treat and I am so lucky that the city treated me so well and I'm so thankful for all the experiences that I did have um and if you want to see pictures from it follow the Instagram at Hannah Marlene I will be posting some cute sexy fun photos um but yeah that was just such a treat see she is such a good friend she's such a down bitch she's like whatever you want to do like let's get it done I was there for four days and we did so much. It was so nice. And I'm so thankful to have a friend like her in my life. And I'm so thankful to be able to garner these experiences. And I know one day, even if I develop dementia, I'll be laying on my deathbed thinking about these moments. And genuinely, that makes me so happy. That's what life's all about. You best live it to the best experience that you can, no matter what. Every moment that you have, go out and enjoy. Um, I think people wonder like how I travel so much and how I make these things happen. But really, I think a lot of traveling, it's not the money aspect. It really is just the planning. Um, if you have enough time beforehand, if you have a place that you want to go, you can get it done if you plan accordingly. If you watch those flights, if you budget correctly, if you really pay attention to what's going on, I think you really can make anything happen. I talked about that with the, my Wyoming trip, which is just like, if you want it, you got to go get it. We got one life to live. You will be pleasantly surprised at every turn even if it is like not an exciting place like maybe an hour out not a full flight I think you'll be surprised by what a new perspective gives you on life and that is exactly what I have now so thank you for listening to me ramble on about my trip hopefully it kept you entertained nothing cuckoo crazy happened thank god I really was not trying to have that happen I didn't want anything crazy um I didn't want another 420 my dad gets arrested kind of situation I really was just looking forward to a really relaxing and joyful weekend with my bestie and that's exactly what I got so thank you universe for making that work out for me thank you to the waterfalls and the gardens and the comedy club and her friends who showed me around and made me feel at home um it was just so fun but I am so exhausted I am so tired uh my boyfriend started his new job so I have the day to myself I think I'm going to deep clean my entire house because I have a really bad habit of every time I go on vacation everything's just thrown about I never deep clean so today is a get your life back on fucking track Hannah kind of day 
um so with that being said i know this was basically an episode of me rambling on about my experience and like so sorry about that i know you came here for your questions and i hear you um i do do an extra um episode every thursday for my patreon girlies Uh, I answer every single question that you guys send me. So I think this week I'm just going to make that public. Of course, I will only be answering um, the questions for my patrons uh, from my patrons. So if you want your question answered, go join Patreon. I post a lot on there. We have a fun fucking time. You get extra content from me every single week. It's fantastic. But I think I'm going to make it public for everybody. So then you kind of get a little extra episode, a little I'm sorry episode you know what I mean but since we do have like what like 20 more minutes left here let's kind of do a little question roulette to end this on a high note someone said all you do on this app is smoke weed bake and post outfits I love you real that's really all I want to do in this life um so of course that's all I'm going to post on Instagram oh by the way I bought wi-fi on a flight for the first time ever in my entire life and it was on the flight on the way to Austin Texas because I knew I it's I'm up I'm not going back to bed my ADHD is not gonna let that happen so I was editing a cooking vid that I made and I finally got to use my cast iron skillet and I made the best grilled cheese ever it was i used sourdough and jalapeno cheddar bread with mozzarella and sharp cheddar i put honey crisp apples that we picked at the farm fresh local honey crisp apples thinly sliced black forest ham arugula i made hot honey drizzled it all over oh my god it was so cute also it's a really cute video so go check it out on instagram um i posted it that day But that was worth the $8 Wi-Fi. I was like, $8 latte or $8 Wi-Fi? I think I'm going to go with Wi-Fi. Speaking of, someone said, feeling guilty like a bad girlfriend, barely being able to cook for my boyfriend. So stressed, please help. I don't know why men think we're their fucking mommies and you're supposed to make them dinner and feed them milk every single day. Bitch, if that man can't cook for himself and pick up some slack here and there, then he's not a partner. Here's the thing when it comes to partnerships. It's not going to look the same for everybody that's why we're not all housewives right now you know what i mean we all can't be the same exact human being we're not all going to be able to cook for each other we're not all going to have the energy to do so and when you don't have that energy your partner is supposed to pick up for you your partner is supposed to take over like if i don't want to cook dinner one day and i look my boyfriend in the eyes and i go I need you to make this. No questions asked. He's getting it done. And that's why I love him. But if you do need to learn how to cook, please check out my Instagram. I think I'm going to make some long form YouTube videos where sure I post like the quick recipe on Instagram, but then I also like walk you through step by step on like a longer YouTube video on YouTube, obviously. So if you do need some tips and tricks on how to cook, I've been cooking for forever. My uncle is a chef. Like I love food. I've been in the restaurant industry for forever. And I want to share that with you guys because I think it's way easier than you've ever, you could ever imagine. I think you just need a little bit of encouragement so stay tuned for that but yeah don't feel bad don't feel bad everybody's gonna be able to do what they can and if you can't do it then that's just who you are baby but i think you'd be surprised at how easy it is to learn someone said not a question but listening to your pod pushed me to work for my dream life i've always wanted yes i love that i was talking about this on the patreon where it was like genuinely like i created this podcast not to be like another bitch with a fucking podcast talking about nothing like there's so many of those and i it's just like it's so draining listening to them because it's like what the fuck is this bitch going on about and listen i'm sure people listen to this podcast and that's what they take from it but my goal with this and i think this comes from my art background especially like going to the art institute and being forced to find meaning in everything is that the same way when you look at a piece of art i want everybody to take something from it whatever that is i want somebody to take something from it and then apply it to themselves to learn more about themselves through a piece of art i want to be that kind of influence and i love that this podcast has that influence where it's like no matter who listens you can walk away with something from this i go through so many questions so many ideas so many thoughts so many feelings and all i want people to take from this is 
uh, hopefully positivity obviously but I just want you to learn something about yourself I want you to look inward a little bit more I want this podcast to be almost like a mirror reflection and for you to hopefully see the light in yourself and to want to grow and do better so that makes me so fucking happy tips for talking with a dry ass texter listen that's me but usually like that's me with friends you know like once I'm comfortable it's like girl I'm not texting you I, come see me you know come knock on my door whatever but if it's with like a man and you're getting to know each other or like a girly and you're getting to know each other and it's like I just want to like have something fun to chat about every once in a while that can that can be really annoying that could be very annoying but not everybody is as good as everybody else is gonna be but I do have a feeling that if you're truly into somebody you will kind of adjust in a sort of way where you're not gonna be dry anymore so if they're dry maybe they're not interested oh my god I'm so sorry to say that but also sometimes you got to take things at face value don't take it too personally you know what I mean maybe once again they just are not good at texting but also if you need a good texter maybe that's not the person for you oh my god you guys also I was flipping through like our local KC magazine um because my restaurant gets new ones every week or not every week every month when they put out a new edition I was flipping and I was flipping and then I saw a article in there called smoke show and I was like oh okay cannabis and life advice column did they get some inspiration from me? That's me having a big fucking head. Um, but like also, I'm like, let me write for you. Hello. If anybody's going to write for you, it better be me. Smoke show girl. Someone said, girl, I don't know if I'm ready for this cold weather. I know. I know. I actually just bought my winter coat for the season. I find that as long as I have a very cute winter coat, it's like, okay, I don't give a fuck what I'm wearing. As long as I have my cute winter coat on, I can look a mess and I can go outside and I can brave that weather. So pro tip when it comes to winter clothing, um, mine is a hot pink penny lane jacket it's a little crazy this time around it's a little crazy for winter but i was feeling myself i thought it'd be fun fuck it i always get a new coat for the season just so i can feel like excited about something and have something fun to throw on especially like if i'm running to pilates or running to get groceries like at least i still feel fabulous also i've spent all summer like practically sprinting around and doing everything that I can I think this is the first season of my life that I am looking forward to winter because it kind of forces everybody to slow down it forces everybody to fall back inward to check on what's going on inside to make sure our homes and our lives and our mental health is in order and I do think that is like a very important aspect of winter that people forget about like sure the seasonal depression scaries I get you but also I think it is such a great reminder and I think about leaving winter all the time moving somewhere that it's 75 and sunny constantly but I would be on go mode all the time and I think it is such a nice reminder to really do that inward checking and I have been just so busy that I am really looking forward to it um, it's all about perspective you know what I mean you can be terrified of something and then you can hold that fear within and then that fear really translates into a fight or flight mode especially when that situation arrives because you have hyped up all this anxiety and I have found that winters in the past have been like that for me especially because winter can be so hard but now I am really taking preventative measures and really enjoying my summer to the max so when winter does come around I have a good routine I have activities in place that will keep me sane that will get me out of the house such as Pilates hanging out with friends going to work whatever it is and also I am excited to finally slow down I'm not gonna lie I am excited to finally take a breath to be inside to chill to enjoy me here and I forget, think we all forget to do that sometimes. Birth control has made me crazy hormonal and I feel like a bad girlfriend. Please help. Yup, 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 yup. When I was on the pill, <gasps> devil. I was the devil reincarnated, quite frankly. I was a horrible, awful human being. And that was not me. That was the pill taking over me. I think one of the best things you can do for yourself as a woman is find a good good doctor whether it's an OBGYN practitioner whatever it is I only trust women doctors I'm sorry I do at this point too many male doctors have not asked me for consent before being like okay let me do this to you like whatever like it's just a part of their routine they don't think about things like that and once I found a really good female doctor who for the first time in my life when I was 23 years old like asked me 
can I am I allowed to do this to you I was like well if you think so she's like no I need like I want verbal consent from you I want you to know that you do have this power in place and you do have a choice over what happens to your body especially in a place that is um medical and that changed my perspective forever I was like oh wow I only trust this bitch now honestly like I don't trust anybody else I trust her and she changed my life and my perspective on medication and hormones and really helps me find the right hormonal birth control for me because I found that you know maybe too much of this was bad too little of this was bad you gotta find the sweet spot you know it's like Goldilocks in the porridge it's too hot it's too cold you gotta find the just right spot and having a good doctor by your side to help you manage through that especially when you're maybe going through the bad times is a great great team member to have on your side um and if you don't like your hormonal birth control you can change it you absolutely can i'm so lucky to have found one that works for me i did a lot of research did a lot of talking a lot of really trying to understand my body and what would be the best thing for me and i ended up going with the iud as you guys know i am on my second iud and I'm so thankful for her. Thank you for not being pregnant. Thank you for being the steel gates of my uterus. She is everything to me. And she also really helped me balance my period. Whereas before I was gushing blood no matter where I went. And I was anemic and just so tired all the time because of it. Helped me really lighten my periods. And also um, manage my hormones. Which in turn made my skin better. Made my head clearer fantastic fantastic all around someone said broke up with my boyfriend and the most beautiful man came into my life it's worth it girls <laughs> that's so funny real sometimes you gotta close the door to open a new one you know what i mean what do you do for your period to make you feel better i'm struggling a lot of ibuprofen and also i allow the crazy to be crazy i allow the hormones to be hormoning you know when you try and fight crazy with sanity when all you want to do is be a crazy bitch you go a little bit more insane whereas if you lean into the crazy i feel like you feel more in or more sane you know what i mean um <laughs> my last period it was a little brutal i'm not gonna lie i was like crying at work i was sobbing on the floor my boyfriend's like well, what's going on but he was like girl just let it out like you don't have to hide it you're at home like let that shit out if you need to sob and roll around on the floor like i'm here for you and that's exactly what i did and best believe i felt so much better for it you know those cheesy rom-com movies where the girl gets broken up and she's laying on the floor eating old chinese food sobbing her heart out spoon with the pint of ice cream you know face mask on like sobbing but also like taking care of herself at the same time that's exactly what i do on my period to make me feel better i don't fight the crazy i let the crazy be i just work with the hormones i flow with them not against them i treat myself i try and take care of myself through it all and i feel like that makes it so much easier than pretending you're trying you're sane when in reality you're not advice on properly managing expectations especially in romantic relationships and friendships when you put somebody on a pedestal, you are not allowing them to be themselves. When you put somebody on a pedestal, you are giving them a godlike quality that no human is ever going to be able to live up to. And thus, you will be disappointed by every single person that walks into your life. And you will constantly leave them searching for that perfect person and you will never find them. You will always be alone. <gasps> That's a little scary. I'm so sorry. I know. But when you truly let people be human and you let them be weird, you have the ick, they make mistakes, you know what I mean and you allow forgiveness to exist in that relationship you are going to build stronger more long-lasting more fulfilling relationships than you have ever had in your entire life sure you might get hurt sure they might say the wrong thing sure you might get annoyed with them or upset or whatever thus is the human condition i fear we have no choice and if you hold people to these godlike qualities no one will ever live up to your expectations and you will constantly be searching for something that you will never find so allow people to be themselves allow them to open themselves up to you as who they truly are and love them despite it all relationships that work well love each other through the good the bad the ugly they love them no matter what not conditionally when you love somebody conditionally that is a face value relationship that is not a strengthy relationship that is not a healthy 
boundary to build that relationship on you're not allowing them to be themselves you want them to be this character you want them to be this god and people will never be that for you girl please help me i just moved in with my boyfriend and i need tips for living with a man love you headphones <laughs> headphones having your own space is nice like he has his little like gamer room his office or whatever i have like my art room which is really nice and it's not like i have a five bedroom house to be able to do that it's just like okay i'm taking over this corner of the house he's taking over this corner of the house having your own space to be your own person to feel like you can garner your own personality while also sharing a space i think is very important especially in a relationship headphones also if he's getting annoying like put your headphones on check out you know what i mean making sure there's snacks around the house i find most times that i fight with my boyfriend is just because i'm hungry and if i had a granola bar in hand i would be okay you're not you when you're hungry how to forgive yourself love you miss hannah i love you if you don't forgive yourself you'll never grow if you constantly stay in this state of i hate i did this i hate i did this i hate i did this you're living in a self-depreciating state where you will never grow from that because you're constantly living in that idea, in that personality, in that moment. You're not allowing yourself to move forward. It's the same thing with forgiveness for other people. If you don't forgive and move on, you're never going to allow them the opportunity and the room to grow. And I think forgiveness is not a golden ticket that you hand them that's like, okay, you get a pass on this. I think forgiveness comes from specifically them showing and this this is also in the realm of you and relationships but you or them showing that you have grown and done better that's when you hand out forgiveness it's not like okay i'm gonna put my emotions aside and pretend that never happened no that's not forgiveness that's not true forgiveness there's not going to be any development from that it's probably going to happen again true forgiveness comes from proving to that person proving to yourself that i'm not that person maybe i was but i don't want to be anymore and i have made active steps in my life to grow and heal and change from that moment that's when forgiveness comes into play but if you do not do those things and you do not offer forgiveness you will never change you will never grow forgiveness is easier to give than you might think i don't think you have to live in the self-depreciating state of mind where it's like oh but i did this i'm such a bad person i'm such a bad person it's like if you say that about yourself then guess what you're the narrator of your own life maybe you are a bad person but if you did a bad thing and you're human that's okay that doesn't mean you're a bad person it just means we have room for growth and we need to make those changes in order to grow and in order to forgive. Forgiveness is such a blessing and I think we need to offer it a little bit more. I feel like the TikTok brain rot really took over a lot of people and it's like, cut them off. If they hurt you one time, get rid of them, throw them to the street. But I think a lot of people are very lonely because of that. And I think a lot of people are constantly searching for once again, that godlike human that simply does not exist. And if you constantly cut people off, if you constantly, you know, put yourself down because of oh i'm a human and i made one bad mistake you will be aimlessly wandering this wasteland constantly alone so i think we need to offer more forgiveness to people especially nowadays the one thing that i think is lacking um especially in interpersonal relationships or maybe in your own relationship with yourself is just a little bit of kindness and kindness really does go a long way anyways i know that was a quick podcast i know i talked about myself a lot i'm so sorry but austin texas did treat me really well and i wanted to share it with you guys and i hope you enjoyed me rambling on about myself a little bit more than usual i had a blast and i'm so thankful for all the connections and the people that i met and the great food and the frolicking it was such a wonderful time and just so thankful to be able to live this life and create a life that i am proud to live you know it's really nice to grow up and be like you know what that 13 year old sitting in her parents bedroom wanting nothing more to escape give her 10 years and all of a sudden she has created the dream life for herself you really can make your dreams a reality all you have to do is dare a little bit and go after it you know but I think I'm going to record the Patreon only podcast and make it public for you. So if you do have a question, join the Patreon. Come hang out with us. It's going to be a great time. But I will be answering those questions and I'll make it public on my page on Thursday. It'll be a fun time. But thank you all for listening to me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you, you beautiful humans. Throw some kindness your way. Throw some forgiveness your way. Stop holding people to these high, high, unrealistic expectations and just 
let people be. I think you'd be surprised by the connections you make, the real true connections you'll make. There's so many beautiful people out there to meet, to discover, to love. And I think you should open yourself fully. But I love you all. Happy Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your day and we will chat soon. Mwah.